Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a little bit more work in my Nikki Franklin little um, collection of stitcheries. So in the last video, I worked out the position of everything and pinned them on to each page that is going to be the signature. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you can either pop back and have a look at the very first video, which shows me putting together the two pieces of calico with a little stitch through here. And that then allows me to attach one of the embroideries, the second embroidery, third and fourth. Once that's done, I've got a signature. Now in the last video, I was thinking through, do I do two signatures or three? Now, I don't have enough embroideries to fill the third. And I thought, well, maybe I will do more. Will I not? I just wasn't sure. But I've since decided that I'm going to do two signatures only because I've got a bit of an idea for the spine and we're doing a floating spine. So I need to, I can go ahead and attach all my little embroideries. And the gap, the last one, is the seed packet, which I haven't started yet. It's in here, ready to go. Save the bees, plant some seeds. So that's still work in progress. And of course, this comes from the series that Nikki did, The Potting Shed, which in the last video, the envelope that that was in, I trimmed it. And I've been thinking about this and I know what I'm gonna do with it. It's gonna go on the back. So perfect, I took a, a smidgen off again. Might even take a little bit more off. We'll see how we go. And it's going to anchor the swinging um, signature spine. What's, what's the word for it? It's the spine of which the signatures are stitched into. And it's not into this. Remember when we started the series, I put this piece of fabric through here just to support everything because she's an old book and I didn't want to stitch into this. That'd be the classic way of bringing your stitches through into the spine. I think I'm going to sneeze, guys. I'm going to pause. Okay, I'm back. Oh my goodness. It turned from a sneezing attack into a coughing attack and then a choking attack and oh my goodness, that was exhausting. So where was I? <clears throat> yeah, today I'm gonna to create the floating spine that the signatures will stitch into. And then to anchor the fabric down this side, this will go into that position, but I don't need that for now. I'm thinking about getting my antiquing um, distressed inks out and going around the outer edge just to distress it up a little bit. I might even scratch at the, the cardboard a little bit just so it doesn't look so crispy and new because this side is so old and weathered. Um, okay, now, what was I going to do? Here's a piece of calico that will form my base. Now, the plan is, <clears throat> or going to plan, don't start coughing and sneezing again, girl. Oh my goodness, I don't know what happened there. I'm just wanting to <clears throat> measure and I'll be a little generous in case the thing squishes all up because I plan on slow stitching this panel to make it feel a little bit more interesting and peeking through, <clears throat> make it a little bit bigger. So that's my base that the signatures will stitch into. So that will be glued there. And this will be glued over here, therefore making it a swinging, a floating spine. Okay. And the signatures will be attached into this. Now, <clears throat> and to anchor that side, that little guy will go in. And then I might find a piece of lace or something that trims this side. We'll see, see what it looks like. That's, you know, details at a later date. So I can put actually all this away because the plan now is on this base collaging 
some interesting bits and pieces. Now, remember this pack? I got given um, a photocopied book of patterns that someone had used for lots and lots of quilts in their time. And in the very back page was this little cluster of fabrics. And I thought, well, they work with this. And I like the fact that they're a little bit stronger in color. So I thought I'm going to go through this little pack of treasures that we got and see what's here that could be collaged in layers. Like that's a good piece. <clears throat> Some of them have been joined into patches. I don't want to break them down. I don't think I need to. I think there'll be enough scrappy stuff like that. Like that. See how beautiful. She must have just had one left or just not quite measured right or who knows or did a test run. Probably a test run. So the plan is to upcycle, I've got a quick unpick here, um, pull these apart <clears throat> and just collage the fabrics down, run some running stitch over them all so that it all becomes one piece. And of course I will invisible stitch them in as well and then that piece will be peekabooing through <clears throat> do not start coughing again something has set me off i know <clears throat> the men have come back to seal the driveway and i think that's what it is so they're using a lacquer it's one of those driveways that all the little stones are exposed. What do they call that? Um, aggregate exposed stone driveway. <clears throat> it was late a few weeks ago. Oh, you can hear it in my voice. It was late a few weeks ago and now the guys have come back to seal it and that sort of just helps keep oils out of it. You know, if you have a, an oil leak, <clears throat> easy to clean, easy to hose helps the pebbles sort of all stay. These are Japanese fabrics. No wonder they feel so nice. <clears throat> and um, they started at seven o'clock. It's 1.30ish now. I know I said good morning at the beginning of the video, but I think that's just habit because I usually film early. And um, I think I can smell the, the lacquer all the sealant, all the epoxy, I don't know what it is, <clears throat> probably just sealant. I can smell it through the house. And I think it has tickled my throat and my nose. My husband can't really smell it. He's, he said it's not too bad, but after I had my <clears throat> coughing attack, I opened up a heap of the doors just to blow any anything out because I don't really want it in here with me. Otherwise I'll be sneezing and coughing. So I hope I get through this video without having another got a glass of water with me this time. I usually don't bring drink in because I don't want to spill it because I know what I'm like. My wings start flapping around and I get excited and there's threads flying and scissors flying. It's just trouble waiting to happen. So I'm not a big fan of having a drink near me. Let's just get this last little piece. We're just going to layer them down. I like how there's some little florally bits here. Okay. You can hear my husband stacking the dishwasher. <clears throat> All right. Oh, some treasures here. Now let's grab my fabric scissors. I could probably iron them and that, but I'm just going to lay them down with a bit. 
bit of a trim if they need it. Get as many shapes out as I can. Not overthinking it. <laughs> Trying not to. Just going to get a bit of a uniformed feel, at least. I'll just trim off all of these little edges that have been stitched because it has penetrated the fabric, the sewing machine before me. Gosh, I feel like I could start sneezing or coughing at any moment. Nasty. Oh, that one there, the flowers right through that seam. Be a shame to trim that. Can we massage the needle holes? Yeah, of course we can. That was just too delicate, too, too precious to trim. And we want to see it, so. I'll put it there because I have a feeling I might put it in the middle. I'm going to take a punt. I wonder if we can get that piece of green under there. Maybe we go high with the grey. I'll be so good to use these little scrappy bits up. That's actually turned under. We'll put it, <clears throat> put it that way because the piece of cardboard artwork will creep into that a little. Once fabric's been stitched and pressed, she's remembering it. Come on, ease it out a little. We want every little skerrick. Once I stitch through, it will uh, be a lot better. Yeah, I like that. We've got the green and the green. Too many pinks. Mm. <clears throat> it's a case of fiddling with it until we get something, isn't it? We just gotta maybe I'll put that creamy bit down there to get us to the bottom. That there. No, then that there. Like that. Now, if you don't want to do your invisible stitch, you can certainly go straight into just some running stitch. That piece there I really like too. I think that's going to have to come down through there. Maybe up. That looks good to me. Put so much thought into these little scrappy little things we do and then they literally are the tiniest of little elements this just makes me giggle at times you know the thought that goes into it i sort of want to see that Okay, what have we got left? We've got a spot there. Let's tuck this little morsel in here. Yeah, that'll do the trick. <clears throat> so if you had a beautiful piece of vintage linen or something and um, you could use that for your spine, 
you could, I like something with a little bit of weight in it. And this calico is not bad, but I can make it stronger by doing some layers of fabric on it. And I just know it'll be a, a stronger spine. Um, I've got an example of it somewhere here, have I? Yeah, here. This is a spine that I did where it was tabs on the little stitchery book. And see how it's like layers of fabric and then stitches? It just made it a, a juicier piece of fabric in the end. And I think I did it with this one as well. Yeah, I did. So the calico, then the doily, then it was stitched. And then inside I added more fabric. And I think I did two of them and put them together. This one and then this one so that they then joined, <clears throat> which made an even stronger piece of fabric. So... Yeah, that's sort of why I do this. Just gives a little bit of interest to I like the, the fabric peeking through. Made in Japan. <laughs> that's interesting. I might be able to get a smidgen of fabric under here. Yeah, might as well use it. It's a, such a tiny little... Such a tiny little spot there, but <clears throat> yeah, that, that's good. So yeah, that got rid of all of those little scrappy bits. I still have a couple nice little morsels for a rainy day. <clears throat> oh my goodness, I feel like my throat's finally clearing. Let's put all that back together because I like it together because then um, if I'm doing a project, I know they all coordinate. So here's my little, little piece. Oh, I love it. I love these colours. <clears throat> okay. Let's just get a couple more pins in. I just want to grab the book. Let's have another little test run because if there's going to be something, you know, adjusted, now's the time we catch it. <clears throat> it definitely works colour-wise, like it's all. And it'll just give it that pop, I think. Look at the colour to the cover. I love it. Get the little embroidery somewhere safe. So that, once it's stitched, will lay in there. That will secure it at the back. And then with some glue and a trim, for example, let's have a little look. I'll probably go with something that's got a bit of substance to it. Not that that's real good, but I know I'd have something that will come through there just to finish that that side and hold, help hold it all down. So it might just come back a fraction, yeah, so that it'll catch through here. Like by the time I'm finished, it glued with the PVA glue, it should be really good. Yep. Yep, that's away from the hinge. Excellent. So we can now proceed with getting this started in stitching. I've got so many little threads, but that's okay. Let's get some quick bit of invisible stitch. So what are you guys all working on? I know you're all sitting there stitching something. If you're doing housework and listening to me, stop immediately, for goodness sakes, that's just a crazy idea. So no housework. You're sitting and stitching. Okay, so let's just grab a couple little stitches as we 
secure them. And then what I'm thinking with the decorative stitch, it'll just be the running stitch. I don't think it's worth doing anything too pretty, like flowers and things like that, because it's within the spine of the signature. So it's really just a peek, a peek through. That needle's got too big of an eye, so therefore I'm gonna lose lose my thread too much and you guys will be very frustrated watching me re-thread. That's a bit better. So yeah I'm thinking just running stitch. I'm not going to bring any other colours in I'm just going to use a neutral just a number eight crochet cotton. It's my go-to. I go through meters of it. It just works. I like the thickness. I like the way it slides through the fabric. It just works. Now, if you want to help yourself with the lines, the running stitch, you could get yourself a heat soluble pen, draw yourself a heap of lines, and then just follow it through. If you want it to look a little bit more free form, Just go for it and it just it just works. Depends how much you want to control your stitches I guess. And the heat soluble pens they just iron out or um, hair dry. Just always remember with those pens and even the water soluble pens don't press really heavily just just mark it enough that you can see it because you know there's always that risk that they appear in the future. I've heard some stories about some of the pens that would just make you make you ill and it's the, the stories where it's been framed and then it's hung somewhere where it's quite cool and then the pen has appeared. I saw the photos of it and oh it hurt my soul. So just be light-handed. It's like everything. If you go and draw in big, dark, heavy lines. Well, you know, you're making the, the product work probably harder than it was designed for. So just keep that in the back of your mind. No need to mark it out with big, big, big lines, I don't think. As long as you can see it, it's just a little sketch or a, a dot here and there or Okay, so it doesn't take long to do the old invisible stitch or tacking stitch. You don't even have to do them small like I do. You could do, you know, nice big stitches and do it in purple thread. And then once you've got your running stitch through, if you find invisible stitch just painful to do for your eyesight, <clears throat> just do some big tacking stitches that'll hold it gets rid of your pins and then you can just remove the tacking stitch I might do that next I haven't done that for ages I've gone on to this whole invisible stitch train let's do some big tacking stitches the thing I do like about invisible stitch is it gives that little dimpling to the fabric which I do like it's like another detail within the piece not that anyone's going to notice it but when you do slow stitch and you're slowly meandering through your project you do tend to notice these little things don't you but then when you pick the piece up in 10 years time you're not even going to not going to notice it so now I'm just doing big tacking stitch. So just showing you another way. This is for all you newbies out there that have stumbled into our world. Welcome. Run while you can because we will we will take you into a vortex of uh, the love of fabric stitch and all the bits that go with it, like buttons and lace and doilies and oh my goodness. Very addictive, isn't it? Did a run to the op shops 
this um, this morning. I didn't find much. It seemed like it, it was well picked through. Oh well. I was looking at all the workers in the back, all the volunteers busily prepping things and I could hear them discussing something that must have had some mould on it. And they were very clever the way they were, um, the treatments that they were going to do. It was getting rubbed down in vinegar and then um, an anti-mould product that they seemed to have. I, I couldn't hear all the details because I was sort of walking back to my vehicle. But I could hear this conversation coming from the, the shed as they were discussing something that needed a bit of a, a clean before it went out on the floor. And I, oh, it made me feel good. I thought, oh, good. That's good when they do that because, you know, you don't want to be putting mouldy things out in your little op shop. So I'm just going to do a sideways stitch here. This reminds me of my quilting days. And just trim it. So that will get pulled out once I've done. So I might just do a quick up through there and then we're ready to do the good old running stitch. Now I found, what did I find? It wasn't much. I found a few buttons, but they were all beige. Nothing exciting. What else did I find? Um, a piece of linen but there were other fabrics with it, but they were, let's be honest, ugly. So I um, got the linen and this little pack of fabrics with it for like a dollar. So I th kept the linen and um, I don't think I can use the fabrics that came with it. It just, yeah, I think they just sit in my room forever. But I'll let them sit there for a bit and think about it, but yeah. Some real 70s fabric, like, um, it's not brown, but uh, it's, it's ugly. Sorry, anyone who love, loves fabric from the 70s. And then uh, the other piece in there, it was a little piece of cotton, that was all right, just white cotton. So I've tucked that away in my drawers you know even if it's just backing for something like this just a little piece of fabric and then there was a real brown looking synthetic when I opened it up it looked like it was an off cut from a blouse or something and I will never use it in a million years <clears throat> I try and stay in the cottons and the linens but then there's sometimes you see fabric and you just love the colour and you know that, you know, when you're only using little morsels, it could be the pop of a colour. You need to do an eye on a bird or a wing on a bird. And so sometimes I do pick up fabrics that probably aren't, you know, the classic. But, you know, sometimes it's about the colour, isn't it? That was about it. The op shop was busy, really busy. There was lots of people in there. It's the one in the little country town, Howard, for all of you Queensland people. The one that was on the way into Burham, it's actually closed. It was connected to a community a community support group that was in the, the shop next door <clears throat> and that's all all closed so I'm not sure what story is there whether they've relocated or I'm not sure but the Howard one was probably the better of them anyway and it's still going strong and they would have had probably seven volunteers in there so it's great to see and it, after hearing the conversation on how to clean something that obviously had a bit of mould on it. Uh, I was, yeah, more warmed my heart that they were taking that bit of care. So I've gone and used a big tacking stitch everywhere. Look at that. 
so much quicker. And like I said, if you've got eyesight that might be a little bit poor or um, you're in a sewing spot that you just don't have real good light, Sometimes you've got a spot where you sew and in the morning it's brilliant, but as the day goes on and the sun moves, your light starts to disappear. So some stitching may not be the easiest to do. So there's my cheat for the day. Now, what I'm going to do is start the whole running stitch. And that will then give me something to stitch later on. But I'll get started with you guys. How are we going for time? Oh, I can't see. Oh, plenty of time. Plenty of time. What else did I get? Oh, I know what I got. See, it wasn't so bad. Maybe I'm just getting too picky. I picked up new packets of chenille needles. My favourite's number 22. But there was one packet of them and then three packets of number 24, I think it was. Yeah, 24, the slightly smaller one. They're okay. But the 22 is just that little bit bigger. The brands, yeah, so-so, they're, they're all right. But they're good for when I've got visitors drop in that want to do a little bit of stitching you know there might be some kids come over and they want to have a, a play in the craft room you set them up with a little project it's just handy to have a little selection of needles that you can send home with someone to have a little stitch so and she charged me 25 cents each which is just too cheap I would have paid two dollars easily for them maybe more <clears throat> so I got the needles and then the, the buttons which are all soaking to one side of me because they look like they've come from 1922 <laughs> no sorry that was wrong 1913 it's like years ago is what i meant to say what did i say 1922 well that's not long no, the, you know, the buttons that have been in someone's home and they've snipped them off shirts and they've still got the threads all in them. That's what they were in this little container. And I'm like, oh, gosh, I'll have to take you home. I'm yet to have a good look through them. I just threw them straight into a, a pot of soapy dishwashing liquid. Give them a bit of a spruce up. So the needles, the buttons, that pack of fabric, which I got the linen out of. What else did I find? I think that was about it. Nothing real exciting. Needles and buttons. It's all good. You're always looking for that unicorn, you know? A big bag of um, silk ribbon or a big bag of what else would be classed as a unicorn? Oh, some gum nut yarn, Appleton yarn, pearl cottons silk cottons you know the unicorns that cost a fortune to buy and if you can find them at an op shop you, you do a happy dance in an aisle but oh, that's what i mean by nothing exciting i don't even think i'll do it i'm not going to do a video either of it because it's yeah it's pretty standard i did find actually hang on Hold the thought, guys. See, sidetracked. I did find this. Oops. I've never seen one of these before. So, stitch it down like a button. And then that goes in there and it becomes a clasp. So, that's exciting. There's a unicorn. So I don't know if these are common or not. I've never seen them before. I don't know if it's old or it's a scrapbooking. Now I can't get it. I don't know if that's a scrapbooking thing. I doubt it because it's a button. So if you've seen them around and you know if they're really old or it's something that's pretty cool. That in itself could be a project. Make something that that gets attached to that's handy. 
This is how my head goes off on all these tangents. I find something random like that and go, what else could I make? Oh, I got some gold sequins too. See, maybe I did all right. You're probably sitting there going, gee girl, you're hard to please. A packet of gold sequins, brand new. You know, the ones they sell in cheap shops. I figured, can't hurt, they need a home. I think I, in the end I spent $9 all up and I end up uh, a $10 note and they've got a bit of a donation jar there so I chucked the dollar in there. I figured the needles themselves were worth a little extra donation. So it was good. Then I went to the local grocery store that's in that little town, it's an IGA. And I picked up some fruit that obviously they had um, a beautiful range of fruit, but they must have had some pineapples, rock melons and watermelons that were really ripe. So someone had lovingly cut it up and put it on a little tray, probably the size of that, you know, like that, all cut, beautifully presented, wrapped in cling. So I saw that and it was like my eyes were like boom 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 got to take some of that home so i just put some on a plate for gaz and i and we had that for lunch and it was nice so i've trimmed it all up with all the rinds gone now so i've got a lovely container of pineapple i was so ripe it was beautiful pineapple watermelon and rock melon and i had a random apple left so that got added to it and I had a little piece of cheese left from a, a platter I did a few days ago. So I put a little bit of cheese on our plate with the fruit and oh, I could eat that stuff all day. So that was a good find. Now, if I remember rightly, I haven't been into that little grocery store for a few years because we'd probably drive more into Harvey Bay to do a proper shop. So I thought, well, I'll pick up a few perishable things for the weekend and, um, you know, saves driving into town. <clears throat> so was pretty chuffed with that and to have it be so fresh and beautiful and supporting a small store instead of Woolworths, that was always good. Got to keep all these little ones going, don't we? So I will be wandering that way a little bit more to Howard, I think, because uh, the op shop, the haberdashery store, there's a chemist there, there's a pub that does fantastic meals, there's a, a butcher shop there that they drive for miles for, and a baker. So for a top-up, you know, shop, just to get a bit of fruit and things, I think they're definitely worth a visit to be honest, buy local. So that was a nice find. And they're really friendly too. I look, oh, I've got to tell you this story. You're going to think, oh, that's so typical, Corinne. I'm standing at this um, refrigerated unit that has the glass doors on it that all the fruit that really needs chilling is in. Behind me are these big crates that your potatoes and onions and things like that are in. So I'm standing there and I spot this sliced up fruit that I was just talking about on these little trays. And I'm thinking, oh, yes. So the girl's getting a little excited. So she reaches in and there's a first one. She picks up some watermelon and it's sticky. And I'm thinking, oh, my little bag's going to be a hang of a mess. So I grabbed one of their plastic bags that are on the rolls in fruit and veggie departments. And I don't know about you guys, but have you noticed the quality of said plastic bags is pretty abysmal. Well, the first bag I pulled off, when I went to open it, it was split in half. It's like a, it was nearly like, eh, I bet this is what's happened. It was like a Stanley knife or a box cutter had nicked it because it had this slit in it. So, well, that's my theory anyway. So that was useless. So then I, I grabbed another one out and it seemed okay, but as I opened it, it started to split, but at least got the watermelon tray in. 
Then I picked up the rock melon tray, put it in the bag. It seemed to be successful. Put that in my little shopping bag that was on my arm. And then I saw the pineapple and I picked up that tray. And of course it was all sticky and sweet and juicy feeling about it. And I'm like, oh, I better grab another bag. So I get a bag, this, this plastic bag off the roll and I open it up and I've got my shopping hanging over my wrist with everything in it. And I'm opening this bag, I grab the pineapple and I slide it in and it goes straight through the bag and hits the floor. <laughs> so the stupid plastic bag, the bottom seam was non-existent. So I was really having a good time of it. Of course then you hear this thud as my pineapple tray hits the floor. And I'm standing there with this look on my face if to say, oh, <laughs> that didn't go to plan. So I, I'm wrangling my bag and what I had already under my arm and trying to bend over with the door still pushing at me because it was behind me and I'm standing within the fridge to pick up this pineapple. And the lady from the counter, she was walking past and she says, oh, love, just put it back and pick something else. And I'm like, no, no, it's all right. I'm the one that hurled it to the floor. And she's like, no, no, it's okay. I thought, no, it's fine. I'll take it because I'm the one that threw it to the concrete. And um, I said to her, it doesn't matter. It's just been tenderized. <laughs> So anyway, I toddled off down through the aisles and picked up a few extra bits and pieces. It was quite chuffed and turned out the fruit was beautiful. So I will be back. I could hear him actually discussing. Do you know I'm an ears, ears dropper? Eaves dropper? Ear, what's the word? Ears dropper? Listening to conversations that are none of my business. I could hear them. The manager must have been heading off for the for heading off because I thought I heard her say I'm heading off to do the banking, which you should never say out aloud in a shop. Let me just make that comment. But anyway, um, and the lady who had spoken to me briefly had said, "Oh, um, what time is the Christmas party again?" So the woman with the banking stopped have a little chat about their Christmas party. So here I am listening to all that, trying to be inconspicuous as I'm hurling pineapple pieces. <laughs> as I'm throwing pineapples around in the fruit and veggie department. <laughs> oh my goodness. And even, oh gosh, we get to the, we get to the um, counter and it was, I don't know what it was, $50 and $53 and 26 cents. So I'm looking through my purse and I knew I had a $50 note. So that was the end of that. And I could feel there was some coins. So the 50 goes over and I'm ratting around in all the coins. And I'm like, you know that moment where you're like, please be enough, please be enough. <clears throat> and um, I found... I found three dollars just but I couldn't find the 26 cents so I'm looking I'm looking and I had nothing I, I had three dollars literally had three dollars and no 26 cents so I'm like bugger it I said I'm gonna have to break up another note so I went then looking for a five dollar note no no five dollar note no ten dollar note I only had a twenty dollar note and another 50 and I'm like oh I should have just paid with my card who you know now how embarrassing I've just spent a few minutes ratting around <laughs> so you know when you just think oh, what the hang I'll go looking for <laughs> instead of stopping <laughs> so now the, the pens coming out old receipts are coming out a shopping bag you know everything in there the phone's coming out and she's like seeing that the situation is going downhill obviously and there was a tip jar a little tray and she says don't worry darling there's tips here that people leave will use 25 cents 
out of that. And I'm still head in the handbag rummaging. And she's got the 25 cents. She's got the $53 and it's in the till and we're done. I'm still rummaging. <laughs> I'm still rummaging. And next minute I find a $2 coin. <laughs> so I'm like, I found $2. It's too late. Transaction's done. She's now starting to think, crazy lady, just move out keep going so I end up throwing the two dollar coin in the tip jar and she's like oh no no you don't have to do that and I said no 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 this will be for next time I said I'm ahead <laughs> and then as I was sort of loading the groceries onto my wrist to go um I looked down in the counter and there was all chocolates and that couple had sold out and there was a five cent piece and a ten cent piece in in amongst the chocolates that people had obviously dropped. So I said to her, look, there's even more money down there. So it turned out to be heaps, heaps of money available. You just had to go hunting for it. Like a scrounging for coins. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? So now I need the thread again. So this is coming together. Now, my lines aren't straight by all means. They're not even. Doesn't matter. By the time you do the whole panel, it just all blends together. Just beautifully. and just becomes this really textured piece. Yeah, I love it. How are we going for time? Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Gas bag away. I'll do one more piece of cotton. Then I'm going to leave you alone and I'll pop back another day and hopefully, oh, my husband's making some noise in the next room, hopefully everything will be finished or at least actually I think there's some blind people here not not blind as in sight we had some sheer blinds installed a month or so ago and one of the runners that the the panels connect to I should have started there come to here turned around but no I didn't too busy talking so yeah the the chaps rang and said that the replacement Oh, fudgy now. See, it's all going to go to, it's all going to fall apart now. The cat's even involved. Um, the new track had arrived. It was bent. They taped them all together in transit and they bent. You're coming up, fudge, now. You sit there, pussycat. Yeah, they taped them up in transit quite firmly and it had bent the track so when the blind slid back it just was catching so they said they were going to order a new one and i knew they were coming at some point and i can hear you guys might be able to hear it too there's clicking clanging that's the men getting ready to install well take down the old one and replace it hello fudge Fudgy's just joined us. He's oh, just ruining this cotton. There we go. Gosh, that was an effort. Some noise. That's probably why Fudge is here too. He can hear something going on in the next room. I hope you guys have got something fun you're doing at the moment with your projects. Getting ready for Christmas. Gosh, hasn't it flown? Mm. So many of these little projects I'm working on now, I just would love to have them done by the new year so I can start <laughs> some more in the new year. So we're getting there, but 
stitch the seasons will carry on, of course. But a lot of these others, like this little one, this is drawing to an end. Maybe one more video where it all is finished. To be good. There we go. We must be really pushing the time because I filmed a little bit and then I had a sneezing, coughing, choking attack. And uh, I don't know how much of that video was filmed. So I'd definitely be on the hour, if not slightly over. All right, guys. I'm going to bid farewell. I'll end this stitch off and I can finish my little floating spine is the correct words. I can then remove all of these little basting stitches. They'll all come out. Then I can mark, I can mark where I want my two signatures to go. So the best way to do that is fold it. I bet I don't have my pen, yes I do. So this is for stitching in your signatures. So do a bit of a line to mark your middle, just a little, little one. And then you're going to mark out from it. I'm thinking I'm going to do one and a half centimetres, which would be about there. Doesn't have to be exact like in my journaling, junk journaling, journal making days, I would have been reasonably exact, but fabric is very forgiving. So you just sort of need to might even adjust it slightly and bring it back to a centimeter. I don't want too big of a gap in the middle. So this is where I will stitch. Now I'm just bringing it back a little. There we go. You guys probably can't see that. So once I get these stitched on, I will then literally find my my lines and line my stitch line up. See how it peaks at the top, peaks at the bottom? Pin it. And I will stitch straight through, attaching the signature into the spine. And you can sort of peel that back and it's just sitting on my black line, which is really good. So but for, before I do that, I will attach my embroideries. I'm sort of getting ahead of myself here, but I just wanted to show you what is the next step if you wanted to shoot along. So that will be stitched in. And then the second one, gosh, this is going to be a two hour long video. Oh, it looks like I was one short. I've got room for another stitchery. Oh, that's not a bad thing, because you never know. Nikki might bring out another, another stitchery in the future that catches my eye. So to have a little spot, it's not a bad thing. Any excuse to buy another little stitchery, hey? So that goes there, that there. So now my two signatures are pretending to be stitched in to my floating signature. 
Oh, look, I've put it on the wrong line. I've gone to the middle. Here's my line. Woo. Slow down, girl. I'm sort of getting ahead of myself here, but I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea of what this whole floating signature concept was all about because you probably just want to get your project done instead of waiting another week, maybe two weeks, for me to pop up with the Nikki project. At least... So there's a fair bit of stitching to do. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. And then that gets glued into here and here. Nothing in there. That goes into there like that. And then that will go on there like that. There we go. So you got the general picture. All right, guys. I better let you go. Goodness sakes, this is ticking on. Let's um, convene another time working on our Nikki project. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.